This is the second session of the chapter Refraction of Light at Plane Surfaces. So let us recollect some important points from the previous session. So in previous session we have discussed about the laws of refraction. What are the laws of refraction? The incident light, the normal light and the refracted ray lies on the same plane. So, if this is the boundary separating the two mediums, so let us say the upper portion as rarer medium, that is the density is low and the bottom section is denser medium, I have considered like that. And let us consider a light ray, let us consider a light ray. So, this is the point of incidence, this is the point of incidence. And to know the angle of incidence and angle of refraction, we need to draw a normal line. We need to draw a normal line. So, this is the incident light ray. This is the normal light. Because of the change in medium, the light is traveling from one medium to another medium. And here the light is traveling from rarer to denser medium. So, when light travels from rarer to denser medium, it will bend towards the normal. It will bend towards the normal. So this is the actual path of the light ray. So because of the change in medium, it will bend and travels like this. So what is the loss of refraction? This incident light ray, this incident light ray, and refracted light light ray, refracted light ray, and the normal light lies on the same plane. These three lines will lie on the same plane. This is the first law of refraction. And the second law gives the relation between incident angle I and refracted angle R. What is the relation? What is the relation between sine I? What is the relation between incident angle I and refracted angle R? So that relation will be given by the Snell's law, which is sine I by sine R is equal to sin i by sin r is equal to n2 by n1 sin i by sin r is equal to n2 by n1 where n2 is the medium refractive index of second medium and n1 is the refractive index of first medium n2 is the refractive index of second medium and n1 is the refractive index of first medium so this is the important points that we have discussed in the previous session. So in this session, we will start a new phenomenon of light. We will start a new phenomenon of light that is total internal reflection. Total internal reflection. Awesome. So let us know about the phenomenon that is total internal reflection. So this, this phenomenon total internal reflection will be observed when light travels from denser medium to rarer medium. This phenomenon will be observed when light travels from denser to rarer medium. So let us see what is this phenomenon. So I have considered a denser medium and rarer medium. Let us say this as water. Let us consider the denser medium as water and the rarer medium as A. So and this is the boundary that is separating the two mediums, water and air. So I have considered a laser light source and initially I have illuminated, I have incident the light ray normal to the boundary. How the light ray was incident here? The light ray was incident normal to the boundary. That means the light ray is incident on the boundary perpendicular. That means the light ray is along the normal. So when the light ray is along the normal, it follows an undeviated path. It follows an undeviated path. There will be no bending of light when the light incident along the normal. So you cannot observe any bending. Because of course there is a change in the medium. There will be no bending of light. Why? Because the light ray is incident along the normal. If the light ray incidents along the normal, the light ray follows an undeviated path. So, slowly just increase the angle
angle of incidence. So again, here the angle of incidence is zero. The angle of incidence is zero. So again, I have projected the laser light with some increasing of angle. So this is the so this is the light ray. When compared with the previous light ray, it has some angle of incidence. So I have done a normal. I have done a normal to the boundary, and this indicates the. This indicates angle of incidence. So this is the actual path of the light ray. This is the actual path of the light ray. Because of the change in medium, this light ray bends away from the normal. So this was the normal line. So this was the normal line. Since it is traveling from denser to denser medium, the light bends away from the normal. This was the normal line, and hence it will bend away away from the normal line. So it will it, the light. bends and travels in the forward direction here the light bending will be observed at some instant times when the angle of incidence is zero the light follows an undeviated path when it when it is having some angle of incidence it will bends away from the normal why because the light is traveling from denser to rarer medium when light travels from denser to rarer medium it deviates away from the normal so again increase this again increases angle of incidence so again i have increased the angle of incidence so this is the when compared with the previous light the angle of incidence is increased now so this is the actual path of the light ray when light ray travels from denser to rarer medium it will bends away from the normal it will bends away from the normal so once again increase the angle of incidence once again increase the angle of incidence so at some particular angle of incidence at some particular angle of incidence the refracted ray travels along the boundary the refracted ray so this is the incident ray this is the incident ray and refracted ray travels along the boundary of the surface so this particular angle of incidence is called as critical angle this angle is called as critical angle so what is meant by critical angle what is meant by critical angle the angle of the critical angle is the angle of incidence at which refracted ray travels along the boundary the angle of incidence at which the refracted ray travels along the boundary is called as critical angle that particular angle of incidence is called as critical angle if you further more increase the angle of incidence what you will observe is so here when you compare with the previous previous light ray this light is having high angle of incidence so this here in this this light ray is having angle of incidence greater than the critical angle so in this case the light will reflect into the same medium here the light ray is reflected into the same medium so when the light will be reflected into the same medium if the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle so this is the case where the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle c so when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle the light undergoes a total internal reflection the light undergoes a total internal reflection so this is the phenomenon what we call as total internal reflection so let us see what let us define what is total internal reflection so before we are defining the phenomenon total internal reflection you need to know what is critical angle what is critical angle when light travels from denser to rarer medium at some particular angle of incidence the refracted light ray will travels along the boundary of the surface that angle is called as critical angle If the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, the light undergoes total internal reflection. The light undergoes reflection into the same medium. This phenomenon is called as total internal reflection. So this is about total internal reflection. So let us see what are the applications of total internal reflection. So we have learned about total internal reflection. What is total internal reflection? when light travels from denser to rarer medium if the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle the light 
the light undergoes reflection this phenomenon is called as total internal reflection so let us see about what are the applications of total internal reflection the very important application of total internal reflection is making of optical fibers making of optical fibers so optical fibers are the small bits optical fibers are the small bits it consists of three layers it consists of three layers it consists of three layers and the so optical fibers are the bits these are the bits it consists of three layers and the innermost layer is called as core innermost layer inner innermost layer is called as core and the middle layer is called as cladding and outermost layer is called as coating so here the innermost layer core is a transparent material core is a transparent material that means it can allow the light to pass through this core is a transparent material it allows the light to pass through the core so core material core is a transparent material and the cladding will be made in such a way that the light entered into the optical fibers will be and will undergo a total internal reflection how this cladding will be made so to obtain total internal reflection this core the refractive index of the core must be greater than the refractive index of the cladding and core is the denser medium optically denser medium and whereas clad cladding is the optically rarer medium here here this is the core this is the core of the optical fiber and this is the cladding section this is the cladding and this is the core and this optical fiber will be made in such a way that the refractive index of the that the refractive index of core is greater than refractive index of cladding the refractive index of core is greater than refractive index of cladding that means core is a denser medium core is a denser medium and cladding is a rarer medium this is a rarer medium and this is the denser medium so if you incident the light into the core at an angle greater the critical greater than the critical angle the light undergoes a total internal reflection the light undergoes total internal reflection the light will be sent into the optical fibers in such a way that the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle so the light ray undergoes a continuous total internal reflection and transfers the information from one place to another place here the information transfer or the light transmission will be working on the phenomenon of total internal reflection here cladding here refractive index of core is denser and refractive index of core is higher than the refractive index of the cladding hence we can obtain a total internal reflection So the phenomenon of total internal reflection is used in making the optical fibers. Optical fibers are used to transmit telecommunication signals in which are in the form of light rays. Which are in the form of light rays. The light rays will be entered into the optical fibers in such a way that it will, that it will undergo a total internal reflection. So this is the this is about the working of optical fibers. So mainly. optical fibers are useful in medic in medicine section in medicine in medicine also we can use optical fibers the optical cables will be sent into the stomach of the patients to view the internal organs they will send optical fibers into the stomach through the mouth and they will send some light into the into the body and they will they will arrange another cable 
to obtain the emerging light rays. So those will be captured and read by the systems. So you can view the internal organs of the human body with the help of optical fibers. And optical fibers will also be used to transfer telecommunication signals. Telecommunication signals. We have we have seen so much of telephone towers around us, and under the telephone towers there will be several cables. Those cables are nothing but optical fibers. Those these optical fibers can trans can transfer nearly 2,000 signals at a time. These optical fibers can transfer 2,000 signals at a time without any interference. That two you know, any two signals will not be intersect. That much efficiently these optical fibers will be used in order to transfer the information. So this is the uses of optical fibers. So let us know how this internal total internal reflection makes the diamond so bright. So what happens in the case of diamond? So we know that diamond is a very bright object. So how the diamond will shine like that? How can we explain? So the brilliance of the diamond, the brilliance of the diamond. Brilliance of diamond can be explained depending upon the, on the phenomenon of total internal reflection. The brilliance of diamond is due to total internal reflection. Diamond is a very dense material. It is a very strong dense material. And it's the refractive index of the diamond is 2.42. The refractive index of diamond is 2.42. It is a very high value. It is a very high value. The critical angle of the diamond is critical angle of the diamond is 24.4 degrees. 24.4 degrees is the critical angle. So, for example, let us say this is the medium made by the diamond, and this is the air medium, and this is the normal I have considered. So, if the incident angle is is greater than 24 degrees. So if the if you say this is the approximately equal to 24.4 degrees is a very small angle and remaining angle here is the remaining angle here is 66.6. So this is the remaining angle. So if you observe here this is the very large section of angle. So what about the light incident greater than this 24.4 will undergo a total internal reflection. So maximum portion of light will undergo a total internal reflection inside the diamond. So there is no condition for entering the light into the diamond. But while it is emerging out of the diamond, when the light is emerging out of the diamond, it has to, the angle of incidence must be less than 24.4. Then only the light will emerge out. Otherwise, if the angle of incidence is greater than 24.4, the light will undergo total internal reflection. In such a way, there will be several light rays undergo a multiple total internal reflection, and suddenly, very intense of light will be emerges out from particular points of the diamond. So, in such at such particular points, the bright light will be emerges out. So, in that way, the bright, the diamonds will have will exhibit high brightness. So this is the reason behind the brilliance of diamond. So depending upon the total internal reflection, we can also explain the phenomenon of mirages. So when you are traveling along very long roads, on a hot summer day when we are traveling along the roads, we will see an optical illusion like there will be some water, there will be an experience of water at a long distance. When we reach to that, to that place, we cannot find water there. So, this is an optical illusion, optical illusion of water. So, that, that, that optical illusion is called as mirrors. That optical illusion is called as mirrors. Mirages. So, mirages are the 
optical illusions that create an illusion. Water illusion. It seems to be water present at a large distances when we are traveling along the road. But when we reach there, there will be no water at that position. So what is the reason behind it? Why we will see an, such an optical illusion like that? So that optical illusion of mirages can be explained with the help of phenomenon total internal reflection. So let us know about the formation of mirages. What are mirages? Mirages is an optical illusion that makes an illusion of the appearance of water at a large distances when you are traveling on a hot summer day. So when you reach there, you will find no water at that position. So thus, this optical illusion is nothing but mirages. So let us know what happens in the case of mirages. So here, on a hot summer day, the road that you are traveling will be very hot. On a hot summer day, the road is having very high temperature. The surface of the road is having very high temperature. So the air near to the road, the air near to the road will have very high temperature. The air near to the road will have very high temperature. When the altitude increases, when the height increases, the temperature of the air decreases. Temperature of air decreases. When you increase the altitude, the air near to the road is having high temperature. When you increase the altitude, when you reach to the some height, the temperature of the air will be reduces. The temperature of the air will be reduces. So because of the reduce of temperature, the density of the air decreases. The density of the air increases. Sorry. Density increases. If the temperature decreases, decreases, the density of the air increases. The density of the air increases. So as you increase the altitude, the temperature of the air decreases and the density of the air increases. So if the density was increasing, the refractive index is also increasing. The refractive index also increasing. So during summer season, the air does not have a constant refractive index value. The air does not have constant refractive index value. The air near to the road is having no refractive index and the A at, the, at, some, at, the, at some height is having high refractive index. So as you increase the height, the refractive index increases. The refractive index increases. Let us divide, let us divide this total section of the A into some sections. Let us divide this A into some sections. So I was dividing the A into some sections. So I was dividing the A into some sections. Here the lower section will have low refractive index and the section which is just above it is having high refractive index and the section above this second section is having high, high refractive index. When you increase the height, the refractive index is increasing. So, higher section is the denser medium when compared to its lower section. And this is the, this is the denser medium when compared to this section. And this is the denser medium when compared to its lower section. So, in this way, when you decrease the height, the refractive index is decreasing. When you increase the height, along the height, the refractive index is the refractive index is increasing. So let us see, let us consider a light ray. Let us know how the light ray will behave. How the light ray will take the path in such a changing refractive index medium. Here the refractive index is not constant. Why? Because the temperature is changing. The temperature of the lower section of the A is very high and hence it has low refractive index. Whereas at high visions, the, tem the temperature of the air is very low and it is having high refractive index. This is not a medium with constant refractive index. So in this case, the refractive index of the medium is changing continuously. Let us know, if the refractive index is constant, the light will take a straight line path. 
If the refractiveness is constant, the light will take a straight line path. But here, the refractiveness is changing with height. As the height increases, the refractiveness also increases. So because of the change in the refractive index, the light, let us see what is the path of the light taken. Let us see. So, I have considered a light ray. I have considered a light ray. So, so this is the normal line. This is the normal line. So, this is the actual path of the light ray. When light travels from, this is the denser medium. When compared this, this is the rarer medium. When light travels from denser to rarer medium, it will bend and travels in the forward direction. It will bend and travels in the forward direction. So again, this is the denser medium when compared with this section. So again, the refraction will occur here. So again, in this section, this is the denser when compared to its lower section. So again, here also the, the light will bend away from the normal. So at so here, the light is traveling from denser to rarer medium. The light is traveling from denser to rarer medium, and when compared with the one section to another section, the incident angle of incidence is increasing. The angle of incidence is increasing. So, at some particular instant, at some particular instant, the angle of incidence will be greater than the critical angle. What happens if the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle? It will reflect and travels in the forward direction. It will reflect and travels in the forward direction. So, in this way, in this way, the light travels along a curve. The light takes a curved path when it is traveling through the air on a hot summer day. So, this reflected light. So, here the continuous refraction has occurred and at some particular instant, total internal reflection will be also observed. So, here a continuous refraction that leads to a total internal reflection. So, on a hot summer day, the refractive due to the changes in the refractive index of the A, it will take a curved path. The light will take a curved path. So let us see how the mirrors will be observed now. On a hot summer day, the light will take a curved path. So here we will observe the refraction and total internal reflection. So again I have considered a rope. So, and this is the tree that is present on this on the side of the road. So, the light that's coming from the sky or the trees will take a curved path during a hot summer day. During a hot summer day, since there is change in the refractiveness of the medium, the light doesn't travel in a straight line. The light takes the light coming from the tree takes a curved path. The light takes a curved path and reaches to our eyes. And reaches to our eyes. So here, the light takes a curved path due to the continuous refraction and it was internally reflected, total internally reflected. Why? Because here, as a, as a particular incident, the angle of resistance is greater than critical angle. So the observed light, the observed light is appears to be coming from the observed light appears to be coming from here and you will observe the image of the the image of the object or the image of the sky on the road. Why? Because the light is appears to be coming from this place. The light is appears to be coming from this place and you will find the image of this object on the surface of the road. And due to the movement of the air between the object and you, there will be some water-like movement will be also observed in this reflection. And hence, because of this reflection, an illusion of water will be observed by the observer. So this is the reason behind the formation of mirages. So mirages will be observed due to the change in the refractive indices, refractive index of A. During hot summer day, the refractive index of A is not constant. With the increase of the height, the refractive index of the A increases. And due to that increase of refractive index, the light will follow a curved path. The light will follow a curved path, and the observed light appears to be coming from the 
from the surface of the road and it seems to be the image of the object it creates an optical illusion of the presence of water on the surface of the road so this is the these are the applications of total internal reflection so let us learn a new concept a new observation a new observation from the rectangular glass slab here we are learning about refraction of light at plane surfaces let us consider a rectangular glass slab rectangular glass slab means it is a transparent material made with glass which is in the shape of a cuboid this is a rectangular glass slab it is made with the material glass so these the surfaces of this rectangular glass slab are plain let us see what is what are the important observations that we are made from this rectangular glass slab so the first observation is the first important observation is lateral shift lateral shift by a rectangular glass slab lateral shift by a rectangular glass slab so i am just drawing the outline of the rectangular glass slab so this is the outline of the rectangular glass slab and i have considered an incident light ray this is the incident light ray so to measure the angle of incidence we need to draw a normal line here this is the normal line this is the actual path of the light ray because of the change in medium here light enters from rarer to denser medium it will bends towards the normal and travels in the forward direction so this is the actual path that has taken by the light but because of the change in medium the light bends towards the normal when light travels from rarer to denser medium it will bends towards the normal so again to measure the angle of incidence here need to write normal here so this is the actual path of the light ray and here the light is traveling from denser to rarer medium when light ray travels from denser to rarer medium it will bends away from the normal it will bends away from the normal so here if you observe this is the incident light ray and this is the emergent light ray this light ray comes out of the rectangular glass slab if you observe these two light rays these two light rays are parallel to each other these two light rays are parallel to each other emergent light ray and incident light ray so this is the emergent light ray and this is the incident light ray so if you observe these two light rays these two light rays are parallel to each other these two light rays are parallel to each other and the distance between these two is these two lines the distance between the parallel distance the perpendicular distance between the emergent light ray and incident light ray is called as lateral shift this distance is called as lateral shift so by knowing this lateral shift we can find the refractiveness of the material so if we have some material some material some transparent material how can you find the refractiveness of the material so you can construct a rectangular glass slab with that material and finding the lateral shift you can know the refractive index of the material that was used to prepare the rectangular glass slab so that lateral shift will be used to find out the refractive indices of the material so what is lateral shift when light ray is incident on a rectangular glass slab the incident light ray and the emergent light ray are parallel to each other the distance between the emergent light ray and incident light ray is called as lateral shift is called as lateral shift so let us know about another observation of of this from this same rectangular glass slab that is vertical shift that is vertical shift so again to explain this i was i was just drawn the outline of the rectangular glass slab i have drawn an outline of the rectangular glass slab so from observing from this side from observing 
from this side place a nail place a nail place a nail on the other side of the rectangular glass slab so just now place a rectangular glass slab here and place a nail such that its length is its length is parallel to the long side of the rectangular glass slab so place a nail like that and consider another light another nail by observing from the opposite side of the rectangular slab place another nail such that both of the nails appears along a straight line both of the nails appears along a straight line so if you just come out of that and observe the real positions of light rays you will observe there will be a distance between them you will observe a distance between them but if you are observing through the glass slab it will seems to be lies on a same straight line if you are observing through the glass slab you will observe these two lines are in a straight line but if you observe in the real point of view these are separated by some distance these two nails are separated by some distance and the distance between these two nails is called as vertical sheet is called as vertical sheet so here if you are observing through the glass slab these two nails seems to be lies along a straight line but if you view the objects really these two are separated by some, some distance the distance is called as vertical sheet so the this vertical sheet and lateral sheet will be useful to measure the refractiveness of the materials we can find the refractiveness of the materials experimentally according to the concepts of lateral sheet and vertical sheet so these are the observations made by the rectangular glass slabs so with this the refraction of light at plane surfaces are completed in the next session we will start a new chapter that is